Good morning, comrade subscribers. So, before I forget, yeah, so, um, Getkla Meister, I got that right. Um, yeah, it made a good point. Well, I keep saying it's two millimeter, but Soviets use 2.5 millimeter. I keep forgetting that, yeah, whereas um, the Western imperialists use 2.54, uh, which is um, uh, a mil, is it? Uh, which is a, a thousandth of an inch or something like that. Anyway, can't remember. So the reason why I'd bring that up is because, so the first one we, we pulled apart has got the, um, I think the, the DDR clone of the Z80. Um, and then when I pulled the second one apart, the one that didn't power on, it's actually got a uh, genuine Zilog Z80. Let me, let me go there mobile. There we go there. So we've actually got a genuine Zilog Z80. Um, and then there's, there's the missing prompt. So be interesting to see, because I think they did with the, with this one here that they actually did make an export, an export one that was 2.54 mil spacing. So it could be that, that, that it's a 2.54. I don't have, I don't think I've got, um, yeah, let me go back. I've got my Moldovan bites here. But, yes, we'll look at that later. So, what I wanted to do, put this over here, is uh, try and see why this one wasn't working. So, I did test the continuity, so I've got the schematics. So it's actually, we've got this little power supply here. Let's see, we've got one, we've actually got more, I think, so I've probably got a couple of grounds. One, two, three. Let's count it properly. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Seven wires. We've got five, five lines here. So we've got plus five volts. We've got the reset, we've got plus 12 volts, we've got the NMI, and we've got, we've got the ground. So, because when I was looking at this yesterday, trying to measure the power, I forgot that we also need to get the NMI and reset to the motherboard, didn't I? Okay, and then um, down here is the um, RGB out. So we've got 12 volts for some reason. So we've got 12 volts, ground, We've got our RGB, we've got our sync, and I think one of these is sound. I'm not sure what the other one is. I might have to, unfortunately it's not a very good scan. I might have to look a bit closer at that one. But let's try. So I guess I could move. The proms are pretty cool. The proms are KS573RE4Bs. Both 91, April 91. Okay. So. I do, do like this keyboard. The only problem is um, you don't have all the additional functions like um, the, the keywords and, and stuff like that, which isn't a problem if it's one of the patched ROMs that allows you to type in print. But if it's one that expects you to go this and that and whatever, then it makes it a bit more difficult. But I guess you get used to it. Anyway, so let's have a look at this power supply sure if we can stumble on why it's not working. It does seem oddly complex. If we've got 24 volts coming out of the power supply here, 24 volts coming out of here, why do we need all, why can't we just have um, uh, two regulators, a 7805 and a 7812? Well, you know, the Soviet equivalents. So I know there are equivalents because I've got them on my um, PDP-11 machine. 
a PDB 11 compatible machine. Okay, let's just try and do this. And we'll stick 12 volts in or 24 volts in. All right, let me just fiddle with this and be back. Okay, so the first thing I notice here, is a bit of gunk around that capacitor, but look at this fellow. He is sitting opposite to what the other power supply had. The other power supply had him put in the other way around. So I guess we've got a mark here, K okay, something. So yeah, that's interesting. So maybe that looks okay. But that's the most obvious difference. Let me get the other power okay, So, okay, if we compare them. So this is this is the working one. This is the one that, well, the LED didn't light. So this electrolytic's different. So this appears to be 68, whereas this one here is 100. So that's interesting. But again, this is, that one's put in opposite to that one so I don't know if it's a if it's a transistor then I guess maybe one's NPN the other one's PNP maybe that's enough um, so that's interesting so anyway so let's try powering this on and um, maybe just checking maybe it's just the LEDs not working now that's very interesting <laughs> the LED certainly did not come on yesterday and now it's coming on. So maybe this is working. I don't know. Maybe it's a bit loose. But it seems to be happily working. I'm not, not too happy about that crud there. And I don't know. It's a bit looking a little bit green, corrode-ish there as well. So it probably would be good to um, pull these transistors off and refresh uh, refresh the um, heatsink compound. Maybe give this a bit of a wash as well. Hmm. What's that? 20, 2200. I don't have one that thin. It's no problem. So, yeah, maybe this one's working now. Of course, these are push buttons. The. Ah, okay. So I'll put this one back together and see if it's the other thing I noticed. There's that wire there, which is missing on that one there, between those two points. But I think that's the transformer, is it? That's that one there. Oh no, it's that point there. there I think hmm okay but if they both work they both work right I have no idea what I said I was going to do but I've given this a wash so to get it to work I need to rest that precariously on that pile we need to build our RGB cable with audio as well, which is a pain in the ass. So I've got a seven pin DIN. Push that back in there. So you don't screw it. Okay, so we've got our 3.5 mil mono socket for the audio and we've got our RGBS cable for the GBS board. 
So for our VGA converter, so it goes on there quite nicely like that. Perfect. So what I'll do is because it's quite long, is I'll put some heat shrink on it. So I'll put some put some larger heat shrink on there with the name. So Oral Oral B. <laughs> so Oral BK, and then some heat shrink along the way just to. I would put it in a sheath, but it just gets. I've got some braided sheath I can put it in if I want it to be fancy. But it gets a bit of a pain when you're trying to do it up this end here. Uh, just trying to get the right length. So, yeah. All right, stand by. Right, that's a bit better. So, I've got just some glued heat shrink and some normal heat shrink with the. Uh, machine name but I'm pretty sure I've made one up for the Moldovan bite that's probably the same pinout um, so the pinout is well no hang on so we've got 12 volts on pin 7 for some reason so I won't be connecting that up although I could if I wanted to use it to power the GBS uh, anyway uh, ground is pin 6, red is pin 5, green is pin 4, blue is pin 3, sync is pin 2, and I assume audio is pin 1. So we don't need pin 7, which is plus 12 volts. Uh, pin 7, which is the upper right one. So what I would normally do is snip that one off. Make sure you squint when you do it. Okay. Um, and so the tricky bit is also that we need the ground. See, I'm, I'm actually thinking of maybe adding a separate for the audio, just putting in a, rather than putting this on, putting a socket on the machine for the audio, rather than having this, it's just a bit, so I'd need to go, before I do anything, so I think a socket on, on, the, on the machine might be better. It's just quite fiddly having to do it this way. Um, I could probably put some heat shrink on here as well. What do you reckon? Should I mop the machine? Too late. By the time I've done it, you'll be screaming in the comments. <laughs> no! It's got to be as original as possible. Uh, all right, let's try and do this then. Let's try and, I won't put a separate one on. So I'll cut off a bit of heat shrink. Like that. So I think next time I do one of these, I'll do it braided. I'll, I'll make the effort for you guys. So I'll stick this on as well. So this is six mil glued heat shrink. Glued heat shrink is awesome. I use it all the time. Okay, so we've got the connector on, we've got the heat shrink on. Now we can start doing this. Another great thing that's always your friend is flux. I, I bought this, God, ages ago and I've <laughs> still got loads, loads left. In this case, I normally just dip that end into here, like that, and we're ready to go. Nice and blurry. Nice and blurry. Okay. So, I think two is always at the bottom. Pin two is always at the bottom. Um... One, four, so six is up the top there. Six, one, four, two, 
I guess that will be at seven. Then that would be three and that would be five. I'll use a different, I'll use the iron with the um, thinner tip. And actually the other thing I'll do is I use some clear heat shrink, well it doesn't have to be clear, but some uh, small heat shrink just to insulate each pin. So obviously you've got to remember to put it on before you do the soldering. <laughs> so that's ground. Which actually, which actually, I need to ground separate because I've got to do also audio ground. All right, so let me get this all set up. Okay. In sync, out of sync, in sync, out of sync. What will make it go in sync? My hand. All right, so let's start with two, which is sync, which is the white cable. Um, yes, I know I need to clean my soldering tip. So two, stick that in there. Two is done. <sighs> fiddly, fiddly, fiddly. Okay, so next to it is four. Four is green. Oh, man, sorry, I'm trying to... It's quite fiddly when you're trying to film it as well. I'll just apply some solder to the iron. And I probably... No, I probably do need to give it the... All right, four. Stick that in there. Okay. Um, one is next to that, which is audio. Okay, we'll avoid that one, leave that one. Six is ground. Okay, so that's where I need to kind of get these two together. I'm thinking I might be able to. The problem is, if you get the heatsink too close to the end, then it'll. Okay, so I want the two grounds to be together. Fiddle, fiddle, fiddle. Uh, it's quite tight actually. Um, I might use a thicker, bigger diameter. That's going to be too long, I think. Oh, might be okay. Um, what did I say? I said ground was pin six, which is that one there. Um, I've done it a couple of different ways. One way to do it is just to do one and then attach the other one to it. Sorry, you can't see what I'm doing. So apart from close up on my fingernails. So do one, and then tack the other one onto it, maybe. Okay, that's one of them on. Probably not the best way of doing it. 
glass it with my hand. Don't need you on the way. <laughs> I don't know how this video is going to look at the end. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's both of them on there. And that can go on there. Okay. Uh, four. Four was green. Oh, no. One, uh, no, one. One, I believe, was the audio. So that would be beside it. Come on. Ah, bugger, I just remembered. <laughs> oh, I didn't put heat shrink on for this one. Doesn't matter. I think it didn't go in anyway. I don't blame you if you skip ahead this section. <laughs> Okay. <sighs> so that's it so far. It's got red blue to do. Let's get the sun of sea shrink on here. Sink is done. All right, let's just get that heat shrink, that, that bits of heat shrink done. Okay. Now we've just got blue and red. So blue goes to pin three and red goes to pin five. So pin three will be up the top there. Pin three is blue. All right, I'll be back when I finish this. This is boring. Okay, so that's the final result. Ow, ow, ow. Now the problem with using multi-core like this, well it's not multi-core, it's separate wires, is that the, the strain relief bit usually doesn't go around all of them, but let's see. So anyway, let me finish this up. Maybe, maybe not too bad. And then, what do I want to do? We've got some Heat shrink here. Actually, what we want to do is we want the heat shrink. Yeah. Get the heat shrink through. Should put the heat shrink on first, maybe. Or maybe. I don't know, maybe there. Main thing is, as long as I can get that all the way over, I just might give it just a bit more mechanical strength there, maybe. All right, I'm going to try it there. Let's see. All right, just squeeze all the glue out, wait for it to harden. And I'll um, put the sheath on, I guess. Hopefully it'll go over. 
not too easy. Okay, so here's my seven pin RGB S plus audio cable. Let's see if it works. So plug one end into the GBS 62 or 82 or whatever it is board. Stick that over there. Um, BGA out. So we've got BGA out. Which one's connected to the screen at the moment? That one. Keep clean in order. Russia. Now, let's just put this back together a little bit. So, keyboard goes through there. Goes on like that. Detachable keyboard. <laughs> Interesting design. Yes, I do. Do love that keyboard. So, um, plug her in here, like so. So that's the video output. We've got our 24, crazy, 24 volts in there. Okay, now we need to power up the GBS board. So I'll we'll stick that into there. And that plugs in up here to my power supply. All right, let me get set up and we'll look at the screen. See if it works. All right, are we ready? Uh, power on. Oh, something's happening. There we go. Uh, basic, basic Sistema uh, version two. <coughs> basic system version two. Okay. Press return. Okay. Reset button. All right, reset button works. NMI. NMI works. But keyboard isn't working. What's the trick there? Keyboard is plugged in. Well, yeah, okay. Interesting. Why does the keyboard wanna? Okay. That's the next problem. Okay, well, actually, what I was thinking of doing is moving the ROMs, so moving the ROMs from here, turn the light back on, so um, moving these kind of original ROMs, because we've got a Zilog Z80, moving these, putting it in the other machine with the, um, with I think the East German, so I might try that, see what that, let's see if that one works. Okay, so we've got it, this is the other machine as well, this is the first machine I I opened up. So I've put the ROMs in and we've got the Z80 clone. Got the power supply connected. Is that in far enough? Okay. Now let's look back at the screen. See if this works. Hey, okay. So, what's that mean? A RAM issue. Mr. Volkman reckons the RAM's not soldered in or something. It looks pretty good to me. Hmm. Um, reset button on the power supply does nothing. In am I? Interesting. So maybe RAM issue on that one. So it's definitely not a ULA issue because yeah, there is no ULA, it's all discrete logic. So, all right, more work to be done. Um, 
I do actually have um, Soviet RAM, the DRAM. I do actually have new old stock from Ukraine. So I know one of the tricks is supposed to be, if it's faulty RAM, is to put uh, DRAM over the top and see if that fixes it rather than desolder it because this, uh, especially as there's no conformal coating, um, you've got to be careful that you don't um, get all the tracks coming off. All right, but I think this has been boring enough for part two. So, one machine boots, but there's no keyboard response. Second machine boots also, but it looks like there's a RAM issue. Okay, hope that was entertaining. Bye for now.